Hello everyone, uh, my name is Danielle. I'm working for Monetary Authority of Singapore, which is the central bank and the regulator for financial industry in Singapore. I belong to the AI Development Office and the FinTech Innovation Group. And our mandate is to promote the responsible use of AI in financial services. Today, I'm very honored to be invited by Stanford University, having this wonderful opportunity to talk about responsible AI. I believe many of you who are listening to me right now are data scientists, researchers, or you may also be technology leaders or entrepreneurs trying to apply AI or big data analytics in a specific domain uh, which generates values to business and society. Have you encountered a situation when you or your team have just created a wonderful AI system, but the users, clients, or management start questioning whether the decision made by the AI meets the ethical standard, um, either set by internal governance units or external regulatory bodies. In short, they would ask you, can I trust your AI? This is the key uh, question because uh, we create AI to help users to save time and effort. We hope AI can save user uh, time to make smarter decisions, but if they can't trust the AI, they will probably needs to verify every single decision made by AI. So how can AI help to improve the efficiency? Lack of reason, uh, lack of trust is the reason why many innovative AI solutions, um, uh, projects or initiatives stay at the proof of concept stage. Um, because when it comes to go production, questions or concerns about whether AI is responsible or reliable will eventually raise up. Um, a lot of concerning from the financial industry is that whether it meets regulatory requirements in the end. So therefore, um, as a monetary authority, uh, we are the central bank also, also the development of promoting uh, the development of the uh, fintech and in innovation, the growth of financial industry, uh, MES in 2019, during the fintech festival, we launched the initiative called Project Veritas. The project Veritas is to research and develop matrices and frameworks to evaluate AI systems adopting in financial services against our FIT principle for responsible AI. So the FIT principle stands for fairness, ethics, accountability, and the transparency. When we look at the fairness, we're actually concerning about um, different things. So Veritas project in the last year's phases is actually addressing uh, how we can actually measure the fairness in the systems. When we talk about fairness, um, what pop, pop up in my mind is really uh, against what do you mean by fairness, how we can assess the fairness. So when we look at deep, deeply into the, you know, the system and the decisions generated by the uh, AI system, we look at whether there is a systematic disadvantage through this system decision making or the use of personal attributes. Is it correct? Is it appropriate through the decision making process? Can we justify that? So really, uh, Veritas um, project actually um, published this fairness assessment methodology through this spectrum of assessing um, the addressing the disadvantage between different groups, as well as addressing, uh, justifying the use of personal attributes throughout the model, how we treat the data, how we treat the model, how we actually deploy it, and how we're monitoring. And this is a continuous improvement journey. So today, I'm not going to details to talk about, you know, the frameworks, uh, you know, the how we're assessing it in a high level and a very philosophical level. I would like to use a very uh, concrete example to illustrate how actually fairness can be assessed in an AI-based, and this example, uh, AI-based system. And this example is actually very common due to last year COVID-19 situation, when a lot of banks start using automated systems to give out credits to uh, customers because everyone is facing 
financial difficulties, uh, they need extra credit. So I will come into the case study right now. Um, for when we look at a uh, credit lending system, it's actually very simple. It gives the uh, decisions to whether a uh, bank should lend to a person. So uh, it comes to be different scenarios. So if we are talking about the, the loan is a good loan, that means it, it gets resolved in the end, meaning the person actually paid back the loan. When we talk about the loan is a bad loan, meaning that the person will eventually default in the end. So um, I find it's very effective to illustrate the situation using confusion matrices. I believe a lot of data scientists uh, are familiar with this. So uh, basically, I would like to go to briefly uh, introduce the scenarios here. So first row means when we look at the target, uh, target means the truth about uh, the, you know, the facts, the truth. So in this scenario, it, it's about whether the person is truly credit worthy. If uh, the first row, um, the green in green means this group of people are actually credit worthy. And the second row means this group of people are actually not, they will eventually default it. Uh, however, the AI will make decisions. So when we look at the columns, that's where the AI actually making decisions. Uh, the first column in green means the AI believes that this particular person is credit worthy, so it gives a loan. The second column, means the AI believes uh, it, he's, uh, this person is not, so it will reject the loan. Obvious, when we look at diagonally, um, you know, that's where the AI is actually correct. AI actually gives the right decisions, make the right decision, give the loans to the person who is able to pay back, and also AI rejects the bad guys. Well, the other diagonal shows where AI actually make mistakes, either by accepting a bad guy or rejecting a good guy. So that's the way we illustrate uh, the situation here from the outcome. And also two concepts are very important. One is called the base rate. So base rate is actually assessing the uh, probability whether a person is able to get along in this case. Um, and also the model precision, or we call it conditional probability. Conditional probability is also very important because that to assess the opportunity of different groups. Now it comes to group fairness. So fairness is always assessment between, you know, uh, comparing among groups. So in this case, I would love to introduce two groups here. Uh, whether we look at men and women are equally being treated, fairly be treated by the system. So of course, um, from data scientist perspective, we always look at uh, this uh, sample uh, data. So we have a sample data. The data sample itself could be unbalanced, meaning we could have twice data, um, twice um, data, uh, maybe two to one kind of ratio. We have more women samples than men. So the data sample is not balanced in this case. Uh, so we can't say uh, sometimes the treatment should be always one-to-one -one ratio. So in this case, we, from data science perspective, the ideal way is actually, I want to try to balance out every single cell, every single scenario, uh, all my outcomes is actually the same ratio as my data sample, which is fairly okay because that's from scientific or from data science perspective, that sounds like very fair to every scenario, but that's not always be the case and it's very hard to achieve for every, um, in the real life, in the real life scenarios. So the situation here is that we could um, look at individual cells and we could think about how we are going to assess what's the meaning behind it. When we can't translate the fairness into data point or the, or the, or the ratios, we, we only need to look at the more, more important thing is to look at the meanings behind every single scenarios. So in this case, when we look at harm and the benefits of people are getting along, that means uh, they receive the benefit of assessing the credit. But if they are not able to pay back, that means um, 
it does some harm to themselves, it does some harm to the society, to the bank as well. So we need to analyze from the business perspective, what, what do you mean by fairness? So here, um, the project group introduced uh, common fairness matrices. Most commonly, it, it will fall into three categories in this case. The first category is called independence. So when it comes to independence, it, it, it refers to the probability of a woman being approved for a loan. Is it the same probability as it for men? So it looks at demographic parities and the assess uh, ratio and the analytics that we're using here is actually looking at the base rate. Also, fairness can also come from another ang two angles. One is called separation. So the separation really looks at the conditional probability. So in this case is when we look at whether men and women have the equal opportunity to be approved by the system. So it address the equal opportunity. It address whether in certain scenario, uh, these two groups are being treated fairly. Well, the, set, the third one, when it comes to the, is, is called sufficiency. So sufficiency really means, because we know the system will make mistakes, it will uh, sometimes is correct, sometimes it's wrong. So we know the system will make mistakes, it will, people will be treated, uh, you know, not so equally because due to the mistake by the system but is it if if the system is wrong is the same for the two groups if the system is right is the same for the different groups so that's what we're so called sufficiency so from these three angles we are able to evaluate the whether the system is be able to treat the two groups fairly Uh, so I know I have a lot to cover um, in this and there's a lot of uh, technical details going through the, you know, the calculations and probabilities here. I'm not to overwhelm, overwhelm everyone here. It's just to give you a sense of uh, when it comes to anal an analysis, an analyzing the fairness, what we are talking about here. So. Um, I think in practice, there are a lot of other considerations as well. For example, in the credit uh, lending use cases, usually we know all these existing loans that we give out for people uh, who are able to pay back or who are defaulted, but we are not able to know the, cons the outcome of the rejected loans. We are not, not able to distinguish between good guys and bad guys when we actually reject them at the, at the, at the beginning. So those are the missing sample data points. That, that, that means in this scenario, in the beginning, it's already not so, uh, I would say, comprehensive. It has biases. Well, there are also trade-offs when we assessing the fairness and looking at also the performance of the system. Because every business design AI system for a specific objective, it either wants to you know, improve the efficiency or wants to uh, generate more revenue and a lot of times there are people uh, looking at the systems and think about if I try to be let it be very very fair it could be turns out uh, I want me be able to meet my business goal so there are trade-offs so we take that as a risk reward approaches to advise the business to uh, eventually consider when they implement uh, their fairness assessment. So um, I'm going to wrap up now. And if you would like to learn more about Project Veritas, you could um, assessing from the screen. Uh, we publish all the white papers and we have or continuously organizing workshops to educate the, uh, the industry. I believe this is a very important area for uh, people start trusting AI and start using AI um, and more AI application will be eventually make greater impact in our world. Thank you very much.